Guten Morgen, guten Tag, guten Abend. So today we have Kapitel 24, which is the Konjunktiv, also known as the Subjunctive in English. And what we have here is Konjunktiv 2, Subjunctive 2, is because there are two forms of the Subjunctive in German. And um, usually you uh, learn this, the number two first. So we are learning the Konjunktiv 2 first, number two first, because it's the more common one. It's the more useful one that you're going to be using um, much more um, commonly, much more often than the subjunctive one, which we will learn in the next chapter. Um, but this one is the subjunctive, and uh, you may have some experience with subjunctive in other languages, like Romance languages, Spanish and French, um, have a subjunctive as well, for example, And um, but this is going to be different from that subjunctive. So in, the, in Romance languages, um, you have a conditional and also a subjunctive, but in German, the, uh, this, the conjunctive, the subjunctive is also the conditional. So there's not like a conditional and a subjunctive, the way you might expect for in Spanish or French, for example. But there is, uh, there is a subjunctive only, and then it's used in slightly different ways. So um, try not to rely too much on anything you've learned about the subjunctive in other languages, because this German has its own subjunctive. That's a little different. So the subjunctive to the conjunctive zwei. Here we have an example. Was würdest du machen, wenn du in Berlin wärst? Which is, what would you do if you were in Berlin? So what we have here is two clauses, and both of these clauses have the subjunctive to in them. So we have two ways to do it. You see how one of these is würdest and machen. It's two, two verbs working together, compound verb form. But then this one, wärst, is just one word, right? One verb. So there's uh, two ways to do this in the Konjunktiv 2. On the left, we have würdest du machen, which is würde plus an infinitive, any infinitive you want. And then on the right, we have wärst, which is an example of the one word type of uh, Konjunktiv 2. So let's try the one on the left, würde plus infinitive. We have was würdest du machen. We could also say ich würde den Brandenburger Tor finden, which is I would find the Brandenburg Gate. So würde is the equivalent of would in English in this context. And then uh, find is finden. And so you see how you have würde in the normal verb position, second position. And then you've got your infinitive at the end. So that's why that's what the dot 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 is. Everything else you need to say, say in the sentence and then infinitive at the end. I would find the Brandenburg Gate. Ich würde den Brandenburger Tor finden. I would the Brandenburg Gate find. So we can also say... Ich würde zum Botanischen Garten gehen. I would go to the Botanical Garden. I would to the Botanical Garden go. You're used to this by now, hopefully, with the infinitive at the end. It's the same as with a modal verb. You could say, ich, uh, ich kann zum Botanischen Garten gehen. I can go to the Botanical Garden. So if it, if it were a modal verb, it would be the same type of word order. Yeah. So I would go is a hypothetical. It's not, um, it's not a real situation, right? It's a in that sense, you could say it's a conditional or a hypothetical or a subjunctive, all the same in German. So, ich würde den Reichstag besichtigen. I would visit the Reichstag. Besichtigen means to visit as in a place or a tourist attraction. So, ich würde, I would, and then besichtigen is visit. So, you just have that at the end. The other verb uh, goes to the end. And then we have this question again. Was würdest du machen, wenn du in Berlin wärst? What would you do if you were in Berlin? Now, this is something that's important to um, note in English that we do, if we have a question like this, we do would plus the other verb, but then in the second clause we do, um, we do like something that looks like the past tense. It's not really the past tense because they, it, it's not like a real situation in the past. It's still a hypothetical situation, right? If you were to be in Berlin, but it's not, it's not the same as past tense, but it looks just like the past tense, right? So the thing is, in German, this isn't the past tense at all. Vast, this is a completely new form. The past tense would be vast, and that's not what this is. So what if we were to translate this exactly, literally, into English, it would say, what would you do if you would be in Berlin? Because vast is the subjunctive, and it means would be. So vast would be. So sometimes when you um, encounter a German speaker, a native German speaker speaking English, 
if they haven't had that much experience with this type of construction in English, they'll say something like, what would you do if you would be in Berlin? So let's say would be instead of were here. Um, and next time you meet a German, ask them a question with what would you do if you, and see, if, see what they do, see what, if, they, if, they, um, if they know that this is different in English than it is in German, right? So um, the important thing to note is that würdest machen means would do, and weast also means would be. It still has the would in it, but in English, you don't have the would right here. It just looks like past. So um, we, are, we have two ways to do it, right? We have the würde plus infinitive over here, würdest machen, and then weast is the one word subjunctive where it's just, it, it's not this compound with virada, but it still means would. The meaning of the hypothetical is still there. So um, let's look at the virada plus infinitive. So um, and it does have all those endings, right? Was würdest du machen? So ich würde machen, I would do. Du würdest machen, you would do. So it's got a st ending. Er sie es würde machen, he she it would do. Wir würden machen, we would do. Ihr würdet machen, y'all would do. Sie würden machen, sie würden machen. So it's important to note the little endings on there. So the ich and the er sie es just have a e, and then the du has the st. And then um, these ones have the ones you would expect. Wir würden, ihr würdet, sie würden. So those endings are going to be important as we go along because they are also on this form. So what? how do we get to weast? Where does that even come from, right? So the way we get to, uh, this is, comes from to be, sein, right? To be. And um, the way to get to this is to think about the simple past. So ich war is I was. Du warst, you were. Er sie es war, wir waren. That's all simple past. I was, you were, he, she, it was, right? And then to take that simple past into the subjunctive, what you need to do is add an umlaut and then um, some slightly different endings, and they are the endings from over here as well. These are the endings. So, ich wäre. We've taken war and we've added an umlaut, and then we've added the endings, which are in this case is the E, right? So, ich wäre, du wärst. Um, it's either wärst with the E-S-T or sometimes wärst with just the S-T. Either are fine. This has two acceptable forms. Du wärst. Er sie es wäre. So, that's, we've added the umlaut and then we've added the E. It's the same as this E right here, that ending. And then wir wären, same here. We've got the E-N ending and we've added the umlaut to waren. So, the thing is, it looks like um, when you translate it, it has to be I would be, you would be. It has that would meaning in it. But sometimes if you have this thing in English where it's like you were, um, then you wouldn't want to say would be in, in English because it just wouldn't sound right. It would sound like a German speaker who hadn't learned how to say this in English right. So um, so it gets can get a little tricky, but we'll get more practice as we go on. So let's first look at the Rioden infinitive. So um, you have to know how to conjugate würden, right? Würden is actually um, the subjunctive form of werden to become. And you already know that werden can be used in lots of compound um, verb situations, right? We had werden plus infinitive is future tense. Ich werde gehen, I will go. So werden plus infinitive is future. But then werden plus past participle is passive. And then würden is, is basically the is the conjunctive form of werden. So we to get to virada, we actually did this process with werden, and that's how we got to virden. So um, now we have ich virde, which is basically the equivalent of I would, right? Du virdest, er sie es virde, wir virden, ihr virdet, sie virden. That's the same conjugation as on the last slide. Um, and so it means I would plus whatever infinitive. I would, or so we have some examples. Er würde kommen, he would come. Ich würde sagen, I would say. Wir würden essen, we would eat. Ihr würdet fahren, y'all would drive. So you just add um, the dot, dot, dot is of course indicating that kommen and sagen and essen, all of these are at the end of the clause. Whatever else you need to say needs to be done before you get to that, um, before you get to that uh, infinitive at the end. Okay, so now we have haben. What we're doing here is ich hätte, which is I would have. 
And how do we get from haben to ich hätte? It's this process that we looked at here. So um, our verb is going to be haben, right? And so let's take the simple past of haben, and that's hatte. Ich hatte, right? So ich hatte, du hattest, er sie es hatte, and wir hatten, right? And then we're going to add an umlaut, and it's going to go from hatte to hätte, a, e, right? So, right? so it's got different um, a different vowel. Hätte is different from hatte. So ich hatte, and then just slightly different endings. Um, then uh, in the in the hatte version, it already has the e there, so it ends up being the same endings as the as the simple past. But the umlaut has been added, which is remarkable because um, if you don't notice it being there, it will change the meaning um, radically. So ich hätte nicht genug Zeit means I wouldn't have enough time. Hätte is would have. I would have not enough time. Ich hatte nicht genug Zeit. But imagine if the umlaut weren't there, it would be ich hatte nicht genug Zeit. And ich hatte nicht genug Zeit is a real sentence. It's grammatically correct, but it means I didn't have enough time. So ich hatte, I had in the past. Ich hätte, I would have in the hypothetical subjunctive, right? So um, this umlaut changes the meaning entirely. So you have to really be careful because it will, and obviously when you speak, if you say it wrong, hatte versus hätte, it'll change the meaning. And then when you translate, if you um, don't recognize that this is actually the subjunctive, you might just mistake it for the simple past, and which would um, not convey the right meaning. Hättest du eine Minute, which is sort of like, would you have a minute? Um, and it's a more polite way to say, do you have a minute? Um, so Germans use the uh, subjunctive for politeness situations quite often. So this is like, would you have a minute? Um, which you could say is like, do you have a minute? But it's just um, subjunctive. Hättest du eine Minute? And then this one, ich hätte eine Frage. So um, it literally means I would have a question. In English, um, we might not say it quite like that. Um, but basically, it's a more polite version of ich habe eine Frage. If you say ich habe eine Frage, that means I have a question. But if you say ich hätte eine Frage, it makes that a hypothetical situation. Like, I would have a question if it's all right. If you have time, I would have a question. So um, if you uh, let's do like a conference paper at a, at a, in German, all right? Uh, this is very common when someone's finished reading their conference paper, and then of course people ask questions, and people start their question with, ich hätte eine Frage, I would have a question, and then they go on with their question. So um, that's a very common thing to say when you have a question, but you want to be super polite. Ich hätte eine Frage. And then sein, which is to be, of course, and then we say, ich wäre, I would be, du wärest, it can be either with the E or without, du wärst or du wärest, er, sie, es, wäre, wir wären, ihr wäret, sie wären. So all of those is like, I, I would be, you would be, he, she, it would be, we would be, y'all would be, uh, you and they would be. So, for example, we have, das wäre gut, that would be good. So it's like, that would be good. So wäre actually contains what in English would end up being two verbs, would be, das wäre gut. Ich wäre glücklich, I would be happy. Wie wäre es mit einem Kaffee? Is a very common way to ask someone if they want to go have coffee with you. How would it be with a coffee? How would it be with a coffee? Which you could sort of say is, how about a coffee? How would it be with a coffee? Yeah. So then we have finden. You can actually do it with finden as well. You end up with ich fände, du fändest. Er, sie, es, fände, wir fänden, wir fändet, sie, sie fänden. So this is like, I would find, you would find, he, she, it would find, we would find, y'all would find, you and they would find. So the reason we have the spell change is because fänden in the simple past is fand, ah, fand. And then we add the umlaut and the endings. And then um, fand, ah, changes to Fender, eh, ah, eh, with the umlaut. So this is pretty common uh, yeah. sentence. Das fände ich gut, which means I would find that good. 
Um, which maybe is something more like, I think that's a good idea. I would find that good. Das fände ich gut. Yeah. Ich fände das gut. So now we have, uh, how do we get from fände to fände? We take the simple past, which is ich fand, du fandest, er sie es fandet, wir fanden. That's the simple past. It's got a, a vowel change because it's irregular. And then we add the umlaut, ich fände, du fändest, er sie es fände, wir fänden. Yeah, so fand, fände. And you see the endings are slightly different, right? Um, the the endings, it's just, um, it's the same endings we had previously with the virada and all of that. Um, these, it's all these, the endings are different than the civil past, only slightly, yeah. Okay, so then we have, um, this is actually what's happening with veaden when we use virada plus infinitive construction instead of the one word subjunctive. So, what is werden in the simple past? It's wurde. Ich wurde just means I became. On its own, it means I became, right? So, ich wurde, du wurdest, er sie es wurde, wir wurden. That's the simple past of werden, to become. And then, uh, we were just doing this, this trick we learned where we add, we take the simple past, and then we add an umlaut, and then a slightly different set of endings. So, we're going to do that here as well. We add the umlaut, and then... Um, we're going to actually get ich würde, du würdest, er sie es würde, wir würden. So we've added the umlaut, and now what we have is the subjunctive, right? So that's why you get würde plus infinitive is a way to make the subjunctive. And also this thing with we did with finden and the one word subjunctive. They're technically using the same uh, technique, it's just that um, you can do it with the word itself or with the virata plus infinitive, and it ends up meaning, meaning the same thing. So let's try with common. What's the simple past of common? Ich kam, du kamst, er sie es kam, wir kamen. Ah, sound. And now we're going to add the umlaut and then the, the correct endings for the subjunctive. So it's ich käme, du kämest. It can, it can also be kämst, yeah. And then um, er sie es käme, wir kämen. So that would be... I would come, you would come, he, she, it would come, we would come. And then we have, um, so the thing is, all of these ones I was just showing you, we have common, finden, um, sein, and haben, we were doing that. Um, but then why why would you choose to do this versus the virata plus infinitive? It's because there are only a few verbs that sound natural with the one word in subjunctive. So, ich hätte... Ich wäre, ich fände, ich käme. All of these we just were looking at. Those sound pretty natural. Definitely hätte and wäre um, sound more natural than the virata construction with those same verbs. And then ich fände and ich käme are pretty common. And those uh, those are those are used quite often with the one word uh, one word subjunctive. But um, in the modal verbs as well, ich könnte is like I could, as in I would be able to. Ich müsste is I would have to. Ich dürfte, I would be allowed to. Ich möchte is I would like to. So after you, we already did möchten way back when we did the modal verbs, and now we are coming to the point where you actually see that möchte is subjunctive already. So it means I would like, um, what you knew already, ich möchte, right? But now you see why it's uh, different from the others, because it's actually a subjunctive. Ich wollte and ich sollte, they don't have umlauts, but they are, this is a subjunctive form, and um, it is common to use the modal verbs, all of these, in the one word subjunctive. But all the other verbs, it's more common to use virada plus infinitive construction instead of the one word subjunctive. So it's just a matter of which, what verb are you trying to say? Are you trying to say, um, you know, hätte, wäre, fände, and kima? Are you trying to use haben, sein, finden, or common? Or a modal verb, if you're if you're using one of those, then it's better to use the one word subjunctive. But if you're using any other verb, it's better to use the virada plus infinitive construction. And then let's look at some politeness things. So um, some of these don't translate very directly into English, that's why it's important to look at them. So the difference between ich will ein Stück Kuchen, I want a piece of cake, not very polite. Ich möchte ein Stück Kuchen. I would like a piece of cake. So, I want versus I would like, of course, more polite. But you can also say, ich hätte gern ein Stück, ein Stück Kuchen. I would like, it also means I would like. It's just another way to say I would like. 
And gyan, remember, means gladly. So it's like, I would gladly have. Would ha Hete is would have, and then gyan is gladly. So I would gladly have a piece of cake, which is I would like, same as I would like. Um, and then compare. Ich habe eine Frage. I have a question. Ich hätte eine Frage. I would have a question. So um, the thing is, uh, the I would have a question is not a very uh, natural sounding thing in English. So you would still have to translate it as I, I have a question, but you could just make it sound more polite. I have a question, please, right? But in some cases, the would makes it sound awkward in English. So you just do the the regular, um, the regular present tense, right? Haben Sie eine Minute? Hätten Sie eine Minute? Makes it more polite. Would you have a moment? And then hast du, hast du eine Minute? We're just doing the du instead of the sie. Versus hättest du eine Minute? More polite to say hättest. Would you have a minute? Yeah. So let's look at these. Hast du Lust, einen Kaffee zu trinken? It's, it's, not, it's not super polite. It's, it's straightforward. Like, if it's your friend, the same thing with ich will. When you say ich will, I want, it's very direct and it can sound slightly demanding. Um, and if, but if it's your friend, it's your family member, it's someone you're very comfortable with, it's fine. You can say ich will. But if you're ordering in a restaurant and you say ich will, it sounds um, not good. <laughs> so if you're writing a restaurant, the subjunctive is, is almost required. Ich will sounds like, give it to me now. <laughs> so um, it's the same thing with, hast du los einen Kaffee zu trinken? It's fine. It's not, it's not like impolite, but it's all, it's just very straightforward, right? But then, hättest du lust einen Kaffee zu trinken? Is more polite. It's just got the extra layer of politeness. And then, interessieren sie sich für das Angebot? Angebot means offer. So, are you interested in the offer is very direct. Are you interested in the offer? Versus, würden Sie sich für das Angebot interessieren? Would you be interested in the offer? Is more polite because it's less direct. Yeah. And then, kannst du mich anrufen? Is, can you call me? It's totally fine for someone you're familiar with and you can be straightforward with them. But if you want to add an extra layer of politeness, then of course, the, könntest du mich anrufen? Would you be able to call me? Could you call me? Could or would you be able to are both, are both that form in, in English. Could you call me? Would you be able to call me? Könntest du mich anrufen? And in English, we do that with it. Can you call me? Could you call me? Sounds a little more polite to say, could you call me versus can, right? And then, können Sie mich anrufen? It's the same thing, but with the polite. Können Sie mich anrufen? It's very straightforward. It's fine. But then, könnten Sie mich anrufen? And that's the, that's the subjunctive form there. Sounds more polite, and you're more likely to get what you want out of the person. Here we have um, an episode of Seinfeld that uses lots of fun English subjunctives. So, Jerry, this is Joe Mayo. He's having a party. This is Jerry. This is George. Jerry says, hey, Joe Mayo, nice place. And Joe Mayo says, thanks. George, can you do me a favor and stay by the phone in case anybody calls and needs directions? So the thing about Joe Mayo is that when you get to his party, uh, he gives you a task, right? Everybody has a role. So he says, can you do me a favor, right? And that's fine. Um, but imagine if he said, could you do me a favor? It would sound slightly more polite, right? So we do that in English as well. And then, yeah, if he said, could you, but he says, can you? But then um, he turns to Jerry and he says, Mu and Jerry's like, music? You want me to do the music? And then Joe Mayo says, actually, can you keep an eye on the aquarium and make sure nobody taps on the glass? And so um, he could say, could you keep an eye on the aquarium? But he says, can you? Either way, would work in English, but could would be slightly more polite. And then Jerry says, but I could do that and the music. And so when he says, I, when Jerry says, I could do that and the music, he's actually using a, like a, a conditional, a hypothetical, right? So he's saying, I would be able to do that and the music. So it's kind of two different ways to use it. Here would be like a politeness thing. And here is a uh, hypothetical describing an unreal situation. They're, they're related ideas, but it's not the exact same usage. So we have that same thing in German where sometimes it's for politeness and sometimes it's to talk about a hypothetical situation. But um, maybe to be polite, you are referencing, you're making a hypothetical in order to be polite, right? So we do this very similar in English. And then Joe Mayo says, oh no, don't worry about the music, just have fun. Okay, so we have können um, Konjunktiv zwei. So the subjunctive two of können, to be able to. So ich könnte, I could, as in hypothetically, or the problem with I could, could in English is that 
um, uh, this is could is actually a past tense as well. I could do it. Um, so it's past tense and and uh, conditional in English. But in German, ich könnte is only the hypothetical. It's not the past tense. I could, as in I would be able to. So I would be able to. I could. Du könntest. You would be able to. As the s könnte. He she it could be able. To, or, he, she, it, could, or would be able to. Wir könnten, we would be able to, we could. Ihr könntet, y'all could, as in y'all would be able to. Sie könnten, sie könnten. They would be able to, they could, you would be able to, you could. Okay, so let's compare the simple past plus uh, with the können in the subjunctive. So können in the simple past is ich konnte. I was able to, I could, or I was able to, simple past. Du konntest, you were able to. Er, sie, es, konnte, he, she, it, was able to. Wir konnten, ihr konntet, sie konnten, simple past. But then in the conjunctive, simple, in the, the subjunctive, conjunctive, we have, it's these same forms, but all we've done is we've added the umlaut. The umlaut is there. It wasn't in the simple past, but now we have the umlaut, so instead of ich konnte, it's ich könnte. Konnte, könnte. So the meaning has changed. It's not, um, it's not a real situation in the past, but an unreal situation in the subjunctive. So ich könnte, I would be able to. Du könntest, you would be able to, or you could, hypothetically. Er, sie, es, könnte, he, she, it, uh, would be able to, or could, hypothetically. Wir könnten, ihr könntet, sie könnten. Yeah. So then we can um, use the same pattern for the, all the other mobile verbs in the conjunctive. So you start with the simple pass and then you add umlaut. In the, um, for the modal verbs, the endings are actually the same for the simple pass and the subjunctive. In, in some cases, the endings are slightly different, but for the modal verbs, they're all identical endings. All, so all you have to do is add the umlaut. So let's look at können again in the subjunctive. The simple past was konnte, so we just had them next to each other. Konnte comes, it becomes könnte in the subjunctive. So simple past was konnte plus the endings. So then we have, we just added the umlaut all the way down. That's how we got to könnte. But let's try it with müssen. The simple past is musste. And so um, the infinitive had an umlaut, but we took it off for the simple past. But then we're going to add it back on for the subjunctive. Uh, but the reason to do that is because the simple past has all of these endings that we, we do want for the, sub, for the um, subjunctive. So that's why it's, it makes sense to go to the simple past first and then put the umlaut back on rather than like trying to build it off the, subject, build it off the infinitive. So ich müsste is I would have to. I would must, right? But you can't say I would must. You have to say I would have to. Um, du müsstest, you would have to. Er sie es müsste. Wir müssten, ihr müsstet, sie müssten. So um, it's very subtle, uh, subtle um, phonetics happening here. So ich musste, do you hear the difference between ich musste, no umlaut, ich müsste, with an umlaut. So um, that's the only difference between those two words is the umlaut. And so um, it's very easy to mistake one for the other. Simple past versus subjunctive. So then let's try dürfen. It has the umlaut in this in the um, infinitive, obviously, but then when we take it into the simple past, the umlaut's gone. But then we've got all the right endings that we're going to want. So we need to use, keep using those endings and then just put the umlaut back on. So you get ich dürfte, which is I would be allowed to. It's like may, I may, but you can't say I would may. So mm -hmm. I would be allowed to. Ich dürfte. Du dürftest. You would be allowed to. Er, sie, es, er, sie, es, dürfte. He, she, it would be allowed to. Wir dürften. We would be allowed to. Ihr dürftet. You would be allowed to. Und sie dürften. Uh, you and they would be allowed to. So then, um, the adding the umlaut on is for all of the modal verbs except for sollen and wollen. So um, in that case, uh, this is what's going to happen. Sollen in the subjunctive we're going to build off of the simple past, which is sollte, so then, but we're not going to add the umlaut. So you get ich sollte, du solltest, er sie es sollte, wir sollten, ihr solltet, sie sollten, and since we don't add the umlaut, it's identical. The simple past is 
I was supposed to, and then the subjunctive is, I would uh, be supposed to, or I should. It's just like a more polite or more softened form of should. I would should, right? So I would be supposed to. Um, so the thing is this, with soy and wollen, it's just from the context. You can't tell whether it's simple past or uh, subjunctive unless uh, you, this context will have to tell you. So, um, and then the same thing with wollen, the simple past is wollte, and then now let's look at subjunctive. Ich wollte, du wolltest, er, sie, es wollte, wir wollten, ihr wolltet, sie wollten. So the thing is, the simple past wollte means I wanted to. But then the subjunctive void means I would want to. So um, the, it looks exactly the same and only context will tell you whether it means um, I wanted to in the past versus I would want to. Yeah. So I say more often it's a simple past, but sometimes you get a void meaning I would want to. And then möchten comes from mögen, and now we see really how möchten happens. So möchten is actually just the subjunctive form of Mergen. It comes from Mergen originally. And if you remember Mergen, that was to like. Like, ich mag Kuchen, I like cake, right? So the simple past form of Mergen is irregular in the simple past. And the simple past form of Mergen is mochte. I liked it. Like, ich mochte den Film. I liked the film. So how do we get into our um, subjunctives? We take the simple past and we add an umlaut. So Mergen goes to mochte in the simple past. And then we're going to add an umlaut to that, and that is how we get möchte. You, get, you go from like to would like by the same mechanism we're using with all these other verbs. Ich möchte, I would like. So you hear the difference between ich mochte, with no umlaut means I liked it. Ich mochte den Film, I liked the film. But then ich möchte den Film would be I would like the film. So just like all these other ones, um, you, uh, whether it's in the past or the subjunctive hypothetical, uh, will be determined only by the umlaut. Ich möchte, I would like. Du möchtest, you would like. Er, sie, es möchte. He, she, it would like. Wir möchten, ihr möchtet, sie, sie möchten. Okay, so now, was ist höflicher? Let's compare some politeness. Ich will ein Stück Kuchen. It's, uh, you know, it's very direct. I want a piece of cake. But if you want to be more polite, you can say, Ich möchte ein Stück, ein Stück Kuchen, which is, I would like a piece of cake. If it's all right. Hypothetically, I would like. Ich hätte gern ein Stück Kuchen, same as before. So I would like to have a piece of cake. So ich habe eine Frage is very direct. It's fine. I have a question. But ich hätte eine Frage is more polite. And I will get you further in life. Um, hast du eine Minute is, of course, very direct. Do you have a minute? It's fine. But you can... Uh, be a little more polite by saying, hättest du eine Minute? Would you have a minute? Haben Sie eine Minute? Is, of course, with the formal, hätten Sie eine Minute? So we're using our subjunctive here to make it more polite. And then, hast du Lust, einen Kaffee zu trinken? And you can see how we get into our subjunctive, hättest du Lust, einen Kaffee zu trinken? Here we have a zu infinitive phrase that we did not too long ago. Those were pretty fun. Hast du Lust auf einen Kaffee? Oh, another common way to ask uh, for this sort of, same sort of thing is to say, um, do you have, uh, Lust means desire, so, or in the mood. So, hast du Lust auf einen Kaffee would be like, are you in the mood for a coffee? Um, and then you could say, hättest du Lust auf einen Kaffee, which would be more like, would you be in the mood for a coffee? It's less direct. Would you be in the mood? W would you have desire for a coffee? Yeah. And then we can have, for example, Kannst du mich morgen anrufen? Could be, könntest du mich morgen anrufen? So we saw all those conjugations a couple slides ago. And um, instead of saying the straightforward present tense, kannst du, we're going to use um, that uh, subjunctive form we were just talking about to say, could you call me or would you be able to call me? And then with the formula, it would be, können Sie mich morgen anrufen? Which is, of course, um, straightforward. Can you call me tomorrow? Versus, könnten Sie mich morgen anrufen? Could you call me tomorrow? Would you be able to call me tomorrow? And then, was ist höflicher? What's more polite? We have this one. Interessieren Sie sich für das Angebot? Are, uh, which is just straightforward. Are you interested in the offer? And then, if you make it subjunctive, würden Sie sich für das Angebot interessieren? Would you be interested in the offer? Much more polite. And then we can do the same thing just to show you how it looks with the du. 
interessierst du dich für das Angebot? And then you just say, würdest, conjugate würde, würden für du, du instead. Uh, was uh, würdest du dich für das Angebot interessieren? Just to make sure that ending matches, right? Okay, and then you can also hide your true feelings with the conjunctive. This is pretty common. So, let's look at this conversation between Diana and Anna. Diana sagt, uh, they're on vacation together and they're trying to decide what's, what they want to do, right? So, wir könnten ins ägyptische Museum gehen. Diana says, we could go to the Egyptian Museum, as in we would be able to. Hypothetically, we could go. We would be able to. We could go. Wir könnten. And then Anna denkt, Anna thinks to herself, das finde ich nicht so interessant. I don't find that so interesting. So finde is in the um, indicative here. Indicative is just normal, like not hypothetical, the real. The indicative is the real and the subjunctive is um, the unreal, right? So she thinks to herself, I don't find that so interesting. Das finde ich nicht so interessant. So completely straightforward in her head to herself, right? But then what she says is, um, yeah, both of those. Um, Anna sagt, das würde ich nicht so interessant finden, or alternately, das fände ich nicht so interessant. Either way, you can go either way with finden. And uh, what she says out loud is, I wouldn't find that so interesting. So it's a way to soften something. It's, it's very direct to say, I don't find that so interesting, or you, you say, I don't think that's interesting, right? And then she says, I wouldn't find that so interesting, or I wouldn't think that is interesting. So it just hides her true feelings a little bit. Yeah. Okay, so Kapitel 24, the subjunctive. So I just mentioned the indicative right now, right? The indicative is the real. It's every verb tense we've been doing so far has been an indicative. Indicative just exists as the default verb mood as opposed to the subjunctive mood, which we are learning now. So um, the, the verb tenses we learned earlier were all in the indicative mood, expressing facts in real conditions. That's just most of what we say, right? But in order to imply doubt, wishes, improbability, contrary to fact, all these hypothetical things, all these unreal things, then German, like English, uses what you call the subjunctive mood. So it's called a mood and not a tense because a verb tense has to do with the time, present, past, future. Um, but a verb mood has to do with your attitude towards it. So it's relationship to reality. So it's different than a verb tense because you can also do it in the present or the past, which we'll see very soon. So, um, English has a few commonly used subjunctive forms. We say, if he knew, if he were, um, it, has, it has few of them, if he were, that's what we had in the very first example, if, if you were in Berlin, so be it, long live the king. So, um, it's like, if he were, normally you'd say, if he was, right? And in English, this is sort of disappearing. Um, if, if I were, normally it's, I was, right? But then I were, that's, it sounds like it's, conjugated wrong, but that's actually um, the remnants of our subjunctive forms in English. So um, with, it's sort of disappearing while people, people are saying more and more often, I, if I was versus if I were, but um, if you are saying if I were or if he were, then that is a subjunctive form in English. It's just a little bit hiding because it looks like the past tense, right? Um, so German has a different way to make all of these things, right? But this is a sim similar idea. German has two types of in this two types of the subjunctive. In this one, we are learning the subjunctive to, um, and their forms are based on the past stem, the simple past. We've been doing that for a few slides already. Um, so we've been, this whole chapter is subjunctive to. There are a couple different ways to form the subjunctive to, that's what we've been doing. Either the one word version or the virada plus infinitive version. Both of those belong to the subjunctive to, just two ways to do it. But subjunctive one is a, is a whole different beast and that is next chapter. So um, we will do that next chapter. Subjunctive so two is primarily used to express uncertainty, doubt, hypothetical situations, imaginary situations, conjectures, situations that are not yet taking place might have been possible. Yeah. So all of the unreal as opposed to the real statement of fact. Um, so let's look at uh, the present subjunctive expresses conjectures in present as well as future. Yeah. So wäre ich reich, so hätte ich viel Geld. Und könnte alles kaufen, was ich wollte. If I were rich, I would have a lot of money and could buy everything that I wanted. 
So wäre actually means would be, but sometimes in English you have to translate it as something that looks more like the past, right? If I would be rich, then I would have a lot of money. That's what a German might say if they hadn't studied this English much. If I would be rich, then I would have a lot of money. But it's if I were rich, right? So the if, basically in the English, the if clause has um, this old form of the subjunctive in English, which is if I were, right? So be it, that kind. And then the other clause, the non-if clause, takes the, the would plus the other verb. So if I were rich, then I would have, then I would have, hätte, would have, and then könnte, could, would, could meaning would be able to buy. Um, alles, was ich wollte, and see, this is everything that I wanted. It's like everything I would want. Yeah. Um, and then, it had, these are the endings we were looking at before. So these endings are going to be on all of those one-word subjunctives. So, if an English subjunctive equivalent does not exist, translate with would plus infinitive. So, um, when it's saying that, like, if the subjunctive equivalent does not exist, it's saying, like, if you couldn't say... Um, if he were, so be it, long live the king. If none of these work, which is pretty often, these are, these are actually quite rare, it's mostly just for were, if I were and if you were, right? If I had, if you had. So to be and to have, those will do it. But with the other ones, um, very often you're just going to be using the would and infinitive. So um, ich sagte, I would say, what's happening here is we're taking sagen and we're looking at the simple past. And um, that umlaut situation only happens with strong verbs. So everything we were doing just now where we said, let's take the simple past and then add a umlaut and then the endings, that is only for irregular verbs. Um, and you so seldom use it with the, with the, with the regular verbs that um, it doesn't really matter that much because um, when, with sagen, you would actually end up doing würde sagen instead of ich sagte, but this form does exist, so it's important to know that it's ich sagte is both I said in the, in the simple past, but then I would say, but because these, this form is the same, um, people hardly ever use it this way because it's confusing, right? It looks exactly the same. So if, um, if, uh, and we'll have some of these in a moment, if, um, it, if it is the same uh, simple past and uh, subjunctive form, then people go to the vyoda plus infinitive construction instead. But it's important to know these because sometimes they will show up. So, ich sagte can be in the context of both I said or I would say. Um, er sie sagte, wir, sagt, wir sagten, sie sie sagten. So that's really hard to recognize, right? But then with the strong verbs, because you add that umlaut and some slightly different endings, then um, then it's very clear that it is not the simple past. The reasons they say I came here would be like, if I came, if you came, it still has that hypothetical meaning, right? So, ich käme, er sie es käme, wir kämen, sie sie kämen. So, hypothetically for that one. And then laufen, we take the simple past, which is lief, and then we add these endings here. Ich liefe, I would run, or if I ran. Um, wir liefen, sie sie liefen. But this would be very, um, this, in real life, you would probably say something more like, ich würde laufen, go back to the würde plus infinitive. Fahren, the simple past is fuhr, so ich führe, I would drive, or drove as in if I drove. And then er sie es führe, um, meaning if, uh, with this type, if I, if he drove, or, or would drive. Wir führen, sie führen. This one is very confusing because führen is a different verb. Uh, führen, this here, means to lead. So people uh, would, would very much avoid this in real life. But uh, the form exists, but it's quite confusing because führen means to lead, not to drive. It turns it into something that looks like a different verb entirely. So haben, this is very, this is like a good one. You'll use this all the time. Ich hätte, meaning if I had or I would have. Ich hätte. Er, sie, es, hätte. Wir hätten, sie hätten. And of course, du hättest, they don't have them. And then wäre, this is very common, very useful. Use it all the time. Ich wäre. I would be, or I were, in the case of the if being there. I would be. Yeah. Er, sie, es, wäre. Wir wären, sie wären. Yeah. Okay. So, umlauts, adeptis, dem, bau, strong verbs are key clue that you're dealing with a hypothetical subjunctive mood. Yeah. Um, forms of present subjunctive weak verbs, for example, sagte, 
and plural forms with uh, plurals without an umlaut like liefen are identical to the past indicative forms. It looks just like the simple past in the indicative. So um, pay close attention to context and recognizable subjunctive verbs occurring in the sentence. If one verb is in a conditional, if one verb in a conditional sentence is in the subjunctive, the other verbs must also be in the subjunctive. So, yeah, it's, the, it's these like if then, right? If uh, then, so er spielte mehr Musik, wenn er mehr Zeit hätte. He would play more music if he had more time. So the thing is, hätte is is very clearly in the subjunctive. So because that is the case, then even though spielte looks like the past tense, it. Uh, it's the hetta is really a clue that it's actually in the subjunctive because um, it wouldn't make sense to say like he he played more music if he had more time like it's it has to be he would play right um, and then we have this is eski but is a uh, it's just a idiomatic form it doesn't really follow um, it just it's its own thing of course like eskit is its own thing meaning um, there is, right? It gives, but it really means there is or there are. So in the same way, um, there's a there's a subjunctive form, es gibe, if there were or there would be, yeah, es gibe. So that was all like the present tense. It indicates the present slash the future, both it's the same, right? But then um, all of that was present and also implied future, but now we have past. So you can also say something would have happened, would have said, would have gone, right? So it's expressing that same kind of unreal situation, hypothetical situation, but we're talking about something that from the past, not from the present slash future. So we got to learn to make those as well. The past subjunctive uh, to consists of hätte or wäre, which are just the present forms we've been learning, but then you add a past participle and that puts it in the past as you might expect. So um, would have plus past participle in English. Er hätte gesagt, he would have said, or if he had said, he would have said, er hätte gesagt, yeah, because hätte means would have, right, would have, and so, and then gesagt means said, so it's literally a translation of he would have said, er hätte gesagt, yeah, Wir wär, er wäre gekommen, he would have come, so if the verb, here it's common, if that verb normally uses sein as its auxiliary in the in the perfect because normally it would be er ist gekommen in the normal past tense right indicative perfect so whenever that verb is going to require um sein instead of haben then of course you just use wäre which is sein in the um subjunctive so he would have come er wäre gekommen er hätte gehabt he would have had if he had had Er wäre gewesen, he would have been, if he had been. Es hätte gegeben, there would have been, if there had been, yeah. Modal verbs and the dependent infinitives occur as double infinitives with hätte in the past subjunctive. So when you add a modal verb, it gets a little more complicated. Um, ich hätte gehen sollen, I should have gone. So it's like, I have gone should. <laughs> I have gone should, right? So um, with these, it's just best to memorize hätte gehen sollen, hätte schreiben können, hätte machen müssen. So just, um, yeah, the, the hätte is first, could also be wäre. Oh, no, with well, the motor verb, it has to be hätte. Uh, but it's, um, but a similar thing can happen. But the idea is that the modal verb is at the end, and then the, uh, the subjunctive form uh, here, hätte, is first, and then... The other one in the middle. Ich hätte gehen sollen, I should have gone. Yeah. So it's the difference here is, of course, we're using ich hätte or er hätte, and here we have a past participle. But when as soon as you add a modal verb, um, you're gonna go to the double infinitive construction instead. There's no more past participle. It's double infinitive. And um, so, but it still means the past tense, even though we don't have that past participle anymore. It still is translated the same way with the past tense. Okay, so let's try some of these. Present indicative. Ich trinke einen Kaffee. That's a normal statement of fact in the present. Present indicative. It's a, ich trinke einen Kaffee. We could have done that sentence uh, on the second day, right? I drink a coffee. But what about, so I drink a coffee. Ich würde einen Kaffee trinken, 
Wenn ich Geld hätte, I would drink a coffee if I had money. So you see how both of these, we have würde plus infinitive, würde trinken, and then if I had, which is the same as I would have in German, if I had or I would have, hätte. I would drink coffee if I had money. Ich würde einen Kaffee trinken, wenn ich Geld hätte. Ich habe einen Kaffee getrunken. This is the past indicative in the perfect. So, habe, habe getrunken, I have drunk a coffee, or I drank a coffee, either way. So, this is indicative. It's a real statement of fact in the past. It really happened. But then, we want to talk about something that hypothetically happened in the past, that, that uh, un, an unreal situation in the past, right? So, that would be, Ich hätte einen Kaffee getrunken, wenn ich Geld gehabt hätte. I would have drank a coffee if I have if I had had money, right? So we have the hätte conjugated for the subject plus the past participle. So in both of these, hätte plus past participle, I would have done it, and then hätte plus past participle if I had had it, or if I would have had it. Same thing in German, yeah. And then um, the wenn is a verb picker, so that's why the hätte is kicked to the end. Yeah, past subjunctive. So then, compare the formation of the perfect and the past subjunctive. Ich habe einen Kaffee getrunken, I drank, or I have drank coffee, versus ich hätte einen Kaffee getrunken. So the only difference here is we've turned habe, which is indicative, to hätte, which is subjunctive. So everything else in the sentence is the same, except for habe has turned into hätte. So you just replace auxiliary haben or sein with the subjunctive form, yeah which is, of course, hätte or sein. So, we need to remember, haben turns ich hätte, du hättest, er, sie, es hätte, wir hätten, ihr hättet, sie hätten, and sie hätten. But sein is, of course, ich wäre, du wärest, or wärst, either way. Er, sie, es wäre, wir wären, ihr wäret, or could be also wert, same principle. Wir wären, uh, sie wären, sie wären, right? So we use these, along with the past participle, to make the past subjunctive. So, for example, ich hätte das gemacht, I would have done that. So, hätte is like would have, and then gemacht is done. I would have done that. But then, if the um, if the verb, which is here, fahren, ich wäre nach Bremen gefahren, so fahren actually normally uses ist. Like, if you want to say, I drove to Bremen, it would be, ich bin nach Bremen gefahren. So, you always have to use the sein helping verb auxiliary with gefahren. So that's also going to be the case with the past subjunctive. You want to use you want to use sein, but instead of using it the normal sein, ich bin du bist er ist, we're going to use the sub subjunctive sein, which is ich wäre. So I would have driven to Bremen. I would ha uh, ich wäre nach Bremen gefahren. Okay, so let's look at some more of these. Ich bin nach Hause gefahren. That's the Perfect, that's I drove home, right? But, past subjunctive, ich wäre nach Hause gefahren, I would have driven home. Sie hat ihre Schwester gesehen, that's the indicative past tense, right? She saw her sister. It's a real situation in the past. But, sie hätte ihre Schwester gesehen, she would have seen her sister. It's an unreal situation in the past. So, sie hätte ihre Schwester gesehen, we've got hätte, Plus the past participle, she would have seen her sister. Ich habe ihn geheiratet, which is I married him. Ich hätte ihn geheiratet. So the only thing we've changed is habe in the indicative perfect has changed to hätte, which is the subjunctive. And so it's the difference between I married him and I would have married him. So it's a very different attitude. I would have married him versus I married him. It's a, we're talking about very different worlds here, right? So, du bist auf die Party gegangen. You went to the party. Du wärst auf die Party gegangen. You would have gone to the party, which means you probably didn't go to the party, right? So it's a very different situation. Wir haben den Tag am Strand verbracht. That's a normal past tense. We spent the day at the beach. Haben verbracht zu spend bringing to spend time. So, we spent the day at the beach. Or, wir hätten den Tag am Strand verbracht, meaning we would have spent the day at the beach if something else, right? So,
So we would have spent the day at the beach. Yeah, so you can see in each of these examples, only one word has changed. Haben or sein has been changed into the subjunctive form, and it changes the meaning entirely. Okay, now let's try with some modal verbs. Ich kann meine Katze mitbringen, present indicative. I can bring my cat with me. Um, I can bring my cat with me. And then we have past tense. Ich konnte meine Katze mitbringen. That's a simple past. I was able to bring my cat with me. Um, and then we did have a while back the perfect. You can do a modal verb with modal verb with the perfect. It's possible. It's just not used very often. But you can say Ich habe meine Katze mitbringen können, which would be I was able to bring my cat with me, right? I I could bring my cat along, or I was able to bring my cat along. Um, I was able to bring my cat with me. But either way, you can do the simple past or the perfect. If you're going to do the perfect, what you do is your is your uh, helping verb haben, like you would normally do haben or sein, and then you do a double infinitive. That's just how that's the construction with perfect with a modal verb. The modal verb changes the whole thing to have um, a double infinitive situation going on, right? So um, I was able to bring my cat with me. I could bring my cat with me. So you can use this perfect in the um, with the modal verb, double infinitive at the end. All you have to do is change habe to hätte, and then you have the past subjunctive with the modal verb. So ich hätte meine Katze mitbringen können. I would have been able to bring my cat with me. Let's count the verbs in English. Would have been able to bring five verbs in a row in English. And in German, it's hätte mitbringen können. It's only three verbs in a row, in uh, three verbs in total, not necessarily in a row, but three verbs to make that in, uh, in German and five verbs to make it in English. So whenever people tell you that German is unnecessarily complicated, maybe, maybe it's English that's unnecessarily complicated. Okay, so then we have a modal verb. You watch out for verbs that would normally take sein to make the perfect. Ich bin mitgegangen is, of course, I went with, right? I, I went with them. So I went along, yeah. So the per gegangen is from gehen, right, to go, and that always uses the perfect with sein. Um, so now we're going to do um, present with a modal verb. Ich kann mitgehen. I can go along, right? So that's easy enough, present with a modal verb. But um, we can do the perfect with a modal verb, and you notice that that actually goes back to haben. So you can, um, we're going to do the perfect, but we're going to, instead of using the simple past like you would normally do, we're going to use the perfect instead, which is fine. Ich habe mitgehen können. So it's just habe plus the double infinitive, like we saw a moment ago. Um, but isn't the, the weird thing about this is that normally if you're going to do the perfect with gehen, um, it, it's been, ich bin gegangen, not ich habe gegangen. Ich habe gegangen is wrong. So ich bin gegangen, right? But then when we add the modal verb, it, uh, it's like the modal verb takes over the auxiliary. And so now the modal verb is determining that helping verb. And the modal verbs use haben and not sein. So even though gehen would normally use sein, um, it's uh, as soon as you add the modal verb, the modal, modal verb takes over the situation and makes it happen. So perfect with a modal verb defaults to happen. So then we can use this. I was able to go along. Yeah, so past tense, real past tense, indicative. But we can use this to make the past subjunctive. So what we'll do is we'll just change habe to hätte. And everything else stays the same, and we get the past subjunctive. I would have been able to go along. Ich hätte mitgehen können. Hätte mitgehen können, with the modal verb being last. I would have been able to go along. Hätte mitgehen können. Yeah. Okay, so let's compare. Present indicative. Ich kann nach Hause fahren. I can drive home. Ich kann nach Hause fahren. Past subjunctive. Ich hätte nach Hause fahren können. So lots of different verbs happening here, right? We have our um, hätte, which is now working as a, a helping verb, and then our double infinitive, right? Fahren können. Or let's compare. Sie will ihre Schwester sehen. She wants to see her sister. Versus past subjunctive. Sie hätte ihre Schwester sehen wollen. She would have wanted to see her sister. So it's like the hätte and wollen 
together make uh would have wanted hätte wollen would have wanted and then sehen is just to see so would have wanted hätte wollen and then sehen is still there to see would have wanted to see and then ich muss tomaten kaufen that's present indicative but ich hätte tomaten kaufen müssen i would have had to buy tomatoes because müssen translated as have to here not must right i would have must musted you can't put must in the past tense so um, you have to do it with this other way. Have to, have to, and not must. Ich hätte Tomaten kaufen müssen. I would have had to buy tomatoes. Du sollst einen Aufsatz schreiben. You should write an essay. Du hättest einen Aufsatz schreiben sollen. You should have written an essay. So, hättest uh, schreiben is sort of like, um, or hättest and sollen is sort of like should have and then written. You have schreiben, right? So, with these modal verbs, uh, in English, we are getting these past participles, wanted, written, driven. But in German, when there's a modal verb, that it just changes over to this double infinitive thing instead of actually having a past participle. Okay. Wir können den Tag am Strand verbringen. We can spend the day at the beach. Wir hätten den Tag am Strand verbringen können. So we have our hätte plus our double infinitive with the modal verb last. Ich soll das machen, I should do that, versus Ich hätte das machen sollen, I should have done that. Wir müssen das machen, we have to do that, versus, past subjunctive, Wir hätten das machen müssen, we would have had to do that. Would have is like, um, hätten and machen, is or hätten and müssen is like would have, and then, uh, uh, miss, uh, machen is to do, right? So would have had to do. It's a, it's a, one of the uh, fanciest things you can do with verbs in any language is the past subjunctive, right? So let's look at some suppositions or uh, conditions contrary to fact. So this is this is the same thing except for um, these are common uh, common ways to do it. Wenn ich das wüsste, so just if um, if clauses, right? So we have unreal conditions and wenn clauses. So Wenn ich das wüsste, if I knew that. So this is the one word subjunctive. We've taken the simple past, wusste, and added the umlaut. So it's wüsste. Wenn ich das wüsste, if I knew that. Yeah. Wenn ich das gewusst hätte, now we're taking that same, it's a, this is present subjunctive and past subjunctive. If I had known that. Yeah. And then, hätte er gewusst, so, had he known that, versus, um, uh, yeah, if he had had if he had known that versus had he known that it's the same thing. It's just different word order. Yeah, it's our, our verb first construction that we sometimes use in English still. Um, and then kima er if he came so yeah either way wenn er kima or wenn or just kima er and then wäre er gekommen had he come verb first construction right and then. Um, or you say, if he had come. Wenn er for it's the same in German. You can say, wäre er gekommen, had he come. Or you could say, wenn er gekommen wäre, if he, you put the wenn in there as well. Which is probably more common to use the wenn, but the wäre, uh, the verb first is also, is more common than the verb first in English. Yeah. Um, okay. So, note that the subjunctives without auxiliaries express present conditions, while past participles with uh, haben or sein are past conditions. So, you know, present hypothetical, past hypothetical. In conditional clauses, wenn may be omitted in favor of verb, verb first construction, like we were just doing. You can do it either way, followed by a result by so a done. So, several, several chapters ago, we were doing those verb first constructions. And so, those the verb first constructions, like all of these, um, they can happen with either the indicative or the uh, subjunctive. So, it's the same structure either way. So let's look at these mm -hmm. ones. Wenn ich das wüsste, if I knew that, würde ich, uh, würde ich es Ihnen sagen? If I knew that, I would tell it to you. I would, I would say it to you. Yeah. Um, so this one is like the one word subjunctive. And then this one is the würde plus infinitive construction. But they both are subjunctive too. Wenn ich das gewusst hätte, if I had known that, so now we're in the past subjunctive, Dann wäre ich gekommen, then I would have come. 
So uh, this first one, this is all in the present tense. It's the, it's the present subjunctive. So it's present tense, but subjunctive mood. So present subjunctive, and the second one's past subjunctive. Wäre er gekommen, so hätten wir unseren Freund besucht. If he had come, had he come, you could say, then we would have visited our friend, so hätten wir unseren Freund besucht. So hätten is, of course, subjunctive, haben, and then past participle, besucht, would have visited. Hätte er das gewusst, so wäre er gekommen, we're still in the, this one is past as well, had he known that, if he had known that, then he would have come. Er wäre gekommen, so wäre er gekommen, so it's just, like, if you want to do the normal perfect past, it would be, er ist gekommen, er ist gekommen, but we've changed ist into wäre, and that's how we get to the past subjunctive. Kime er, so gingen wir ins Kino, if he were coming, so um, you could also say, wenn er kime, it would be the same, and then gingen is actually um, the one word subjunctive coming from the simple past, obviously, that's why it's the exact same as the simple past. Wir gingen ins Kino is also, we went to the movie theater, um, and so because that, that over, whenever that overlap happens, People typically go to the Vrida construction, like Vrida Zagen. This would uh, more commonly be Vrida Gien and not Gien. Yeah. Gebe es mehr Zeit, if there were more time, um, or were there more time, I guess you could say in English as well, but um, the if is more common. So you could also have in German, wenn es mehr Zeit gebe. So spielte er das Lied noch einmal. He would play the song again. And so because this clause is already the subjunctive, gebe, that's very clearly in the subjunctive, then spielte being identical to the simple past is not such a big deal because you can tell what's going on. I guess the same here as well. Kima is very obviously in the, in the subjunctive. So, of course, from context, gingen is also in the subjunctive, but um, people typically go to the Vrida construction when that happens. Okay, so in a translating result clause, with or without Würde, use would with the present or past infinitive. Hätte ich mehr Geld, so führe ich nach Deutschland. If I had more money, I would go to Germany. But this is, führe could be würde fahren. So, hätte ich mehr Geld, uh, würde ich nach Berlin, fa nach Deutschland fahren. Würde ich nach Deutschland fahren. Would be um, another way to say that with the würde plus infinitive. This one does actually have that with the würde plus infinitive. Wenn es regnete, if it were to rain, um, würden wir zu Hause spielen. Um, so would, this is weird, a plus infinitive construction. Wenn ich nicht gekommen wäre, if I hadn't come. So here we have past participle plus the helping verb in the subjunctive, wäre. Uh, wäre mein Vater beleidigt gewesen, my father would have been offended. So... Uh, would have been is wäre gewesen, would have been, and then beleidigt is offended. Yeah. Wenn Columbus Amerika nicht entdeckt hätte, so hätte es jemand anders getan. If Columbus had not discovered America, someone else would have done it. I obviously have problems with this sentence. Not grammatical problems, but content problems. <laughs> so discovered America. Okay, wenn Columbus Amerika nicht entdeckt hätte, had not discovered, nicht entdeckt hätte, had not discovered. So hätte es jemand anders getan, uh, so ye, someone else, jemand anders, uh, would have, hätte, done it, getan, yeah. Okay, so uh, then clauses or result clauses standing alone. So sometimes you don't say the whole two clause situation, you just do the one alone. So that's what this, this is um, showing some examples of what that looks like. So, wenn clause, um, and it often has nur or doch involved to make it more emphatic. So, wenn ich das nur wüsste, if I only knew that, if only, it's a if only type situation. And then nur is often in there as well, but um, it's it shows up a little later. So, nur means only, right? So, wenn nur, if only, but then you put nur a little later than you would in English. So. Wenn ich das nur wüsste, if only I knew that, and wüsste is in the subjunctive. And then you can also do, um, just like those other ones, you can do the verb first to imply the if. Wüsste ich das nur, if only I knew that, same, same translation. Wenn nur ein Arzt hier wäre, so sometimes the nur uh, 
um, the nur goes next to whatever the emphasized thing is. If I, if I only knew that, if only a doctor were here, so whichever one is being emphasized, the nur goes in front of that. So, wenn nur ein Arzt hier wäre, um, if only, so vera is the subjunctive, if only a doctor would be here, you could say, but were here. And then um, you can do the verb first version as well, without the wenn, just the verb first. Wäre doch ein Arzt hier. Yeah. Wenn ich nur Zeit gehabt hätte, if only I had had time. So, um, yeah, if only I had time, right? The was right in front of that. And then, of course, you could do the verb first, without the wenn. Hätte ich nur Zeit gehabt. Das hätte ich, noch, das hätte ich doch nicht geglaubt. I really would not have believed that. So that I would have not believed. Doch is really, is emphasize. So, um, you can just, yeah, these are just showing when it's one clause. We've been doing them with like, if, then, two clauses, but these are all just one clause situations where you use the subjunctive. Um, and then, uh, subjunctives often occur when you have eyes, op, or eyes, then, as if, as though, as you can imagine. So, they, um, they, these two, uh, these two phrases, eyes, op, and eyes, then, trigger the subjunctive. So, er tat, als ob er nichts gehört hätte. He acted as, as though he had heard nothing. Yeah, so you can see how that's a hypothetical situation. It's an unreal situation. So, as though, yeah. And then, um, or as if, yeah. Sie benahm sich als ob sie seine Mutter wäre. She acted as if she were her mother. So, she were is, that that is our, a form of our subjunctive in English, right? And if, if it were past tense, it would be she was. She acted as, as if she was his mother. And so more and more, that form isn't really existing, but um, but it is. If you say she were, that is the uh, subjunctive in English. So it looks like would be, though. She acted as if she would be his mother, would be like the, the way to do it. But of course, that's not how we do it in English. Die Bewohner bleiben auf der Insel, als ob es kein Sturm käme. Uh, the inhabitants remain on the island as if there weren't a storm coming. Yeah, as ob, as if. Uh, no storm were coming, yeah, as if no storm would be coming, you could say, but uh, in English we use the were coming. Um, note the position of the finite verb. When op or wenn is omitted, it does not stand at the end of the clause, but directly follows eyes. So this is a little bit um, unexpected word order happening. Die Bewohner bleiben auf der Insel, als käme kein Sturm. Eyes is a is a subordinating conjunction, right? Uh, normally, eyes would mean when, and it's uh, you would when you use it, it's a verb kicker normally. But um, when in this situation, it's uh, it's not kicking the verb. Eyes came, so it the verb comes first. It makes it into a verb first construction, um, and it just has to do with the fact that it's a verb first construction. Verb first constructions imply. Um, hypotheticals. So I think that's where that comes from. But just just note that it comes first. But normally eyes would be a verb kicker. Yeah. Um, er schien als bewegte sich der Sturm in eine neue Richtung. It seemed as though. Yeah. So normally eyes would kick the verb all the way to the end. But now the verb is first because it means as though or as if. Okay. We have got to the end of the subjunctive for now. I know it's a lot to take in, but hopefully, uh, as you do the exercises, it will become more clear. So we have this little uh, this little paragraph for you to translate. These are all in the present subjunctive. So the uh, the simple version we learned first: wäre. It'll be a combination of wäre and hätte, and then würde plus infinitive. So the present subjunctive, and then um, these are all modal verbs. This is all present um, present subjunctive as well, but with modal verbs. So we're going to translate these modal verbs in the subjunctive and see how they're used. And then we have some past subjunctives. So just a few sentences in the past subjunctives. And then um, these are past subjunctives with modal verbs taking it to the next level. So past subjunctive, but with the modal verbs. See how the modal verbs are always at the end there? It's a double infinitive at the end of all those. And then um, uh, hopefully, when you get through all those, you can still get to some of the more complicated um, sentences at the end, and of course, the longer text for you to translate. So, viel Glück und viel Spaß, lots of luck and lots of fun with those. Und wir sehen uns im Zoom, we'll see each other in the Zoom, und wir sehen uns auch im nächsten Video. Tschüss, auf Wiedersehen.
Mach's gut.